Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, because I've been struggling with the topic of circumcision within Islam, you guys recommended this video to me. Today we're gonna watch Islam and circumcision. Is circumcision compulsory in Islam? by the channel The Believer. As I said previously, bodily modification is a huge issue for me personally, especially as someone that has tattooed himself in the past and now came to regret this. Once I returned to faith, once I returned to God, I saw that I did a mistake with tattooing my body. In the Bible, it says that our body is our temple and therefore, of course, we have to honor our bodies and accept them the way that God created created them. You see it in this day and age, what people do to their children. Boys can be girls, girls can be boys, and everything in between and beyond. This bodily modification issue is a huge struggle for me. This is why today I'm excited to hear a further explanation on the topic of circumcision. With no further ado, let's have a look. The purpose of all such directives of religion is purification, either it's physical purification or it's spiritual purification. So circumcision is something which relates to more of your hygiene, more of your physical purification. So we know, I mean, this is something which is well known that if you cut that part uh, from the male organ, uh, it is able to, uh, I mean, instill purity in a much easier way than if that part is left intact. So uh, the reason for this is Again, that hygiene and purity about which uh, not only internal hygiene and purity, but external hygiene and purity of the body, which every religion, uh, every divine religion, I would say, uh, lays a lot of stress on. I fully understand the spiritual and physical purification the purification of the body and the purification of the soul. However, when it comes down to cutting organs, as he just mentioned, I see a problem with this, of course, especially with proper hygiene measures in place. I do not see an issue with that extra skin. We can shower ourselves, we can clean ourselves, we can use soap. First of all, it needs to be understood that the directives of Islam, if you, if you ask in a way that we are able to find out where exactly it is placed, uh, the sources of Islam are two, the Quran and the established practice of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, which we call the Sunnah. And this established practice of uh, the Prophet Muhammad, it actually has a lot to do with the Abrahamic practices, which crystallized in the times of Prophet Abraham and they were transferred all the way from Abraham up to Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and they were given sanction by him uh, and they, were, they became part of the final religion. So circumcision is, some, is, is a directive which is found in the established practice of the Prophet. It is not mentioned in the Quran at all, not at, at a single place. No. But again, as I said, the reason is that the sources of Islam are not just, is not just the Quran, it is the Quran and the established practice of the Prophet. And by the established Prophet of the Prophet as the Quran speaks, it is basically a sunnah of Ibrahim or the sunnah Ibrahimi and circumcision is something which originated from Prophet Abraham and we, can, we know this from the Bible as well. That I understand fully. Abraham was circumcised, no doubt about it. Even Jesus was circumcised according to the Bible. However, I personally haven't found a hadith in which Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, has been circumcised. So if you know anything on those lines, please let me know in the comment section. The directive regarding circumcision is that uh, the male offspring, the male child, he has to be circumcised. There are some spurious narratives which speak of female circumcision, which is an absolutely heinous thing to even imagine. Uh, it has no basis. Uh, the narrative which is actually ascribed to the Prophet uh, wrongly that he uh, recommended female circumcision is, is uh, totally baseless, it's spurious and is a wrong ascription to him. It is only the male child who has been prescribed and this practice in itself is not obligatory. It's, it's, a, it's like a recommended practice. So you see the established practice of the Prophet Abraham or the, the Sunnah of the Prophet as we can say, they themselves are divided into mandatory into recommended and it has different grades. But as far as circumcision is concerned, yes, it is a practice uh, of Prophet Muhammad recommended, 
but it is not obligatory it's not mandatory it's something that's highly recommended and one more thing that i think i would like to explain here is that the the purpose of all such directives of religion is purification either it's physical purification or it's spiritual purification so circumcision is something which relates to more of your hygiene more of your physical purification so we know i mean this is something which is well known that if you cut that part uh, from the male organ uh, it is able to uh, i mean instill purity in a much easier way than if that part is left intact all right guys and this already it for today's short video however it was definitely clarifying for me personally yet again it was mentioned that it definitely is not mandatory moreover it was mentioned that it was abraham's practice how about prophet muhammad yet again this is really my question here i personally couldn't find a hadith in which i saw that prophet muhammad was circumcised i even heard that he was born circumcised other sources said that he probably was circumcised because this was common within the Arabic Peninsula. However, I didn't see it as a practice mentioned of Prophet Muhammad. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Be that as it may, guys, after doing all of this research, for me personally and definitely for my son, I'm not considering circumcision. Never say never. Who knows what the future brings? I would have never thought that I'm going to sit on YouTube and talk about Islam in the first place. But as for right now, I'm definitely not there yet, especially researching and finding out that it is not mandatory, that it is favorable, but not mandatory. Therefore, this is a practice that I personally choose not to do for now. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you, as always, for your ongoing support, guys. As always, much love and peace.